Composing Chats and Conversation Posts. So our goal for this module is to review and demonstrate how to compose chats and conversation posts from A to Z. We're going to cover every ind individual nuance and feature that's available for you uh, to compose those messages. And we're going to do it through a series of, we're going to break it down into different components. Uh, this seems like a pretty basic uh, thing to do, right, to create chats, <laughs> but there's actually so many little things that are associated with creating a chat that uh, we need to break it down into, uh, I think, more bite-sized segments. So let's start with a discussion of the uh, difference between a, a conversation post and a chat, otherwise known as private chats versus team posts. So in the previous module, we kind of went over the difference between chats and team channel posts. So that's really what we're talking about here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start by uh, just doing a little bit of an overview here. So I'm in the chat app here in uh, Teams. And you can see along the left-hand side, these are all pre-existing conversations that have uh, taken place. And so I sent a chat to my personal account as John Higgins' guest. Uh, chat with Marsha Sheehy and Bucci and so on down the line. Now, if I want to compose a new chat, I could just go up here and click on this button at the top, and that's what I've done. So it, now I have to go in and identify who do I want to send this chat to. So I can send it to an individual. I'm going to uh, work with Marsha Sheehy on this. So if I start to type Marsha's name, you'll see as soon as I put an MA, it's given me all the people who are in my teams that I've previously communicated with that begin with MA. So I can just uh, click Marsha Sheehy there. And what happens is because uh, Marsha and I already had a one-to-one -one conversation going, uh, at this point, it's just gonna bring me back to that existing conversation. Very similar to what you would typically do on your, uh, on your uh, mobile phone. Now, what I wanna do also is uh, compare, as we go through all these different features, I wanna compare how they work in the chat application versus how they work in the Teams application. So uh, at this point, if I just wanted to continue on with this with Marsha, I'll just go ahead now and, and we just continue the conversation. So I'll click in here, I'll say, I'm beginning to show how this works. I have Marcia on standby to uh, respond to my messages. Really just making a statement there. Now what you'll notice is a couple things. Earlier, my previous message to her, you see it has the eyeball there. That's telling me that she has seen it or read it on her system. I don't know if it's on her PC or on her uh, mobile device, and that's really irrelevant as far as that goes. Uh, the new message I just typed, you'll see there's a check mark there that is telling me that I've sent the message. Now, a couple other things to note. Notice uh, how, of course, I have Marsha's uh, picture in her profile. The green uh, checkbox, the green check, indicates that she is available, that she's actively in the Teams application. So I would expect a response from her, although I didn't ask a question, so maybe, maybe not. Um, I'll just type something simple like, how is your day going? Okay, and then just, I'm just typing a simple message and hitting the enter key and it sends it off. Now, while we're waiting to see if she responds, notice over here on the left side, if I go over to Ann Bucci to that conversation, uh, she's away. So her status, what, what that means is she's actively logged into Teams, probably on her mobile device, but I, I don't know, uh, but that she's not been active in it for over 10 minutes. So Green means you've been working in the application. And here we go, we see Marsha is now responding. It tells me Marsha, she he is typing. And so depending on how long her message is, we should ex see it pop up here uh, momentarily. So there we go, she's saying it's a beautiful day. Uh, a nice simple response. So she's active, that's why it's green. If she doesn't type in Teams or navigate in Teams for 10 minutes, then her status indicator will go from green to yellow. And so what, why is that important? Well, that just lets you know that if, if, it's, if it's yellow, she may not uh, respond right away because she may not be looking at her screen even though she's logged into Teams. Where if it's green, that means she's, you know, within the last 10 minutes been active in Teams, so I should probably expect a response. Now, if we go over here to Janet Colligan, you'll see there's an X there, and if I hover over that, she is offline. Okay, so that just means that uh, if I send her a message, she's not gonna see it right away until she logs back into Office 365 and, and specifically goes into the, uh, into the Teams app. Now there's one other indicator that's not showing here, and that would be a red circle. 
So a red circle uh, as opposed to a green and yellow means the either do not disturb or busy. And it'll tell you specifically which, which of the settings it is because uh, if I have a meeting scheduled in my Outlook calendar, then when I'm uh, communicating or when I'm logged into Teams or anybody's trying to communicate with me in Teams, if I have a meeting during that time in my Outlook calendar, it'll show as red. It'll say in meeting. And that way they know, well, you can still send John a message, but don't expect a response because uh, based upon uh, his calendar, it says that he's in a meeting. Now, related to this, you can change your status. Uh, so some of the statuses are, are done automatically, but if you just want to uh, kind of force your status setting, up in the upper right-hand corner here, you'll see where your profile is. Just click on that, and uh, uh, underneath your name and picture, it's going to show your status. Right now, I'm available because I'm actively working in the in the application, but I could go over here and say, change it to red, busy, red, do not disturb. And what do not disturb means is that it won't pop up any um, notifications while I'm in that meeting uh, because I may be sharing my screen or whatever. So it's just a way to, uh, so if you wanna make sure that you don't get pop-ups uh, when you're in a meeting as well, just choose do not disturb. Whereas busy, uh, you'll still get pop-up notifications if somebody sends you a post, but, um, uh, they'll know you're busy because the status is red. And then you can put in uh, be right back, yellow, so you can kind of force the away. Remember, if, you don't, if you're not active in, in Teams for 10 minutes, it switches to away automatically, uh, but you can just add some specific text uh, to force this and say be right back uh, or appear away, even though you may be active in Teams, but you just don't want anybody bothering you. Uh, but you don't want to tell me you're busy, so I don't really know exactly why that choice is there, but you can just appear uh, to be away. And then if you click reset status, that'll just reset it to whatever you actually are based upon Teams uh, standard settings. Uh, while I'm in here, I might as well go over this as well. Set your status message. So you can also type in a message here up to 280 characters, and you can then just check the box that says show when people message me. So this is kind of like in Outlook, the out of office reply setting, if you can think about that. So I could say, you know, I'm going to be uh, uh, in a meeting, a very important meeting until three o'clock. So just uh, don't expect any kind of response from me. I could type that in here and that way I would say, okay, uh, so maybe that's gonna be for the next four hours. I would just uh, choose that and that's what message, whatever I put in here will appear next to my status indicator check mark. Uh, for that period of time, and then it'll, it'll go back after four hours, it'll go back uh, to normal. So I don't actually want to set that, so I'll just move back here. Okay, so this is the basics of how you uh, go in and choose the person you want to communicate with in, in, a, in a chat session. Now, I already have this conversation uh, started with Marcia. Let's suppose I wanted to add somebody else to the conversation, because at this point, only Marcia and I have uh, access to this conversation. So up in the upper right-hand corner here, you see the uh, uh, add people. And by the way, I'm demonstrating all this in the desktop Teams app, but they're virtually identical in the, uh, in the online version of Teams. So I'll click the button here to add people, and I could type a name here. And so I'll just type in, uh, uh, let me just put in my guest name here. That way we just keep it still between the two of us. I click add here. And then notice what happens. So it's, it says you're starting a new, new conversation. Why is it a new conversation? Because up until this point, I have not had a conversation that involved Marsha and my personal account. So it, if there had been an existing conversation going on, um, then like so you see Marsha and, uh, and Rachel and I already had a conversation going on. So when I composed a new message and chose Marsha, and then I chose to add Rachel, it would come back uh, to this message here because that's the message that, um, you know, we're both, uh, all three of us are involved in. Okay, so just realize you have that ability to, to add people to a conversation. And if you do, uh, in fact, let's go back and do that one more time. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to compose a new message. And I'm going to choose Marcia. Okay, and then... Um, I'll just respond, yes it is. Okay, and now if I wanna add Rachel to this conversation, I just click the, uh, type her name, Rachel. Add. And so now what you have 
is this is a previous conversation that uh, Rachel and Marcia and I had. So it just takes us back to that message. Again, you should be very uh, familiar with this relative to how you do text messaging on your phone. All right, so, so that's how we select our uh, uh, participants in a conversation. Now let's go back over, or over to the Teams application. And I'm gonna go into our Teams demo uh, account here, or Teams, remember we talked earlier in the course, you have in Teams, you have your Teams and you have your channels. Okay, so in here, if I want to start a conversation um, here, I don't have to choose anybody to, to send it to. And I'll just say, hello team. I'm just demonstrating a team chat. So by doing that, here's what happens. Let me uh, just send it off. So I posted that. So anybody who is a member of the Teams demo team will now uh, see that message. What will they see? Let me see if I have an example here. I guess I don't. Uh, let, me, let me go and do this. Let's go over back to chat. So I'm just asking uh, Marsha to send me a message in the, uh, in the marketing CPAX 365 channel. So I'm, I'm back to the chat app, right? And while, while I, uh, I'm waiting for her to respond, notice that in the chat app, these are called chats. When we go back over to Teams, they've uh, rebranded them, and they used to call them chats here as well, uh, but they rebranded them, and in Teams, they call them posts. So it's just a little, you know, idiosyncrasy there, but just be aware that they're called posts in the Teams and Teams channels, and they're called chats in the uh, chat app. Okay. So hopefully the, uh, we'll give Marcia a minute or two here to uh, send her message to the uh, to the CPAX 365 marketing, which is down here. You see, I have my marketing team and I have my uh, CPAX 365 channel down below it. Now, um, so so back here when I posted this message in the uh, demo team marketing channel, I didn't tag anybody. So therefore. Uh, Anybody who's a member of that team will not get the badge app. They will not get an activity uh, notification because I didn't specifically tag them. Uh, but what they will see is they will see as they look in, in their panel here, their team's demo marketing uh, name, that channel name will become bold. And that's their way of knowing that somebody's made a post there, didn't specifically tag them. But in this case, it is... Uh, uh, a message that is out there, and because they're a member of the team, they may choose to read it. So let's go ahead now. Now I'm going to start a new uh, message here, and it says start a new conversation. Type at to mention someone. So in this case, if I want to specifically uh, send a notification to Marcia, I can type an at sign, and you know what happens then is it knows I'm doing what's called an at mention or a tag. So it's showing me all the people who are uh, in this. Uh, particular team here. So we got Ann, Marsha, Rachel, John Higgins as guest, and Sydney. So I'll choose Marsha, and I can just pick her name or keep typing. So now it's a little bit hard to tell, but her, her actual uh, name there is uh, like purplish. That's to tell me that it's an active uh, mention. So just, I'll just say it, just testing out at mentions. And so, um, Oh, the reason I did that is because I typed the word at mention, so that's that's why I said there's no nobody matches that. Okay, so now at this point, when I hit send, so Marcia got another message. Now you can see a little bit more clearly that it's a little bit different color, her name there. So her activity bell would have just now um, activated with the, with the red number one badge app because I specifically tagged her. Everybody else who's in the uh, Teams demo marketing channel will see this uh, message. Uh, but again, it's just going to show bold for them. They don't have to worry about it because they didn't get a, a badge app notification. So that way they would know it's not specifically uh, posted to them. So another way to uh, expand upon at mentions is if I go down here to compose a new message, one of the things I can do is I can type at, and the name of this team is uh, marketing. So if I type in M-A-R-K, You'll see it'll show me an option of marketing channel. And again, that's uh, highlighted or uh, purplish. So what does that mean? I'm tagging everybody in the uh, marketing team. That way, 
whatever message I post here, and I'll just say this is just a demo. Correct my spelling there. And now when I send it, everyone who's a member of this marketing demo team uh, just got a notification that uh, in their badge app, their activity badge app, that they there's a message there for them because they were all at mentioned. You can also at mention multiple people. So I could say, uh, let's mention Marsha and let's mention uh, Brian. So I just select their names and then whoever, whoever I include in this list of at mentions, their badge app will be activated. Remember, everyone else uh, will not be uh, activated per se. Their, their badge app won't be activated, but what will happen is the channel will be bold for them. So those are really the basics of how you uh, select the people you want to participate in the conversation. In the Teams channels, you have to be explicit. You have to, uh, well, I guess you don't have to be explicit. You can just type a message and hope that the people in that channel who are members of that team in that channel see the, the bolding of the channel name and therefore go and read the message. But if you want to specifically uh, notify them, then you have to do the at mentions of their names individually, or you have to at mention the entire uh, channel. Whereas when you're doing the chats, uh, in the chat application, uh, you don't have to do any at mentions, of course, because the people you are communicating with uh, in that particular chat conversation are automatically going to get a badge app on the chat button whenever you type a message and send it to them. Okay, so that gives you the, uh, uh, basically covers the fundamentals of uh, selecting and tagging participants for a chat in the chat app or a post in the Teams uh, channel app.